Welcome to everybody. Hello, my name is Mare Roldi. I'm the academic co-director of the Government Outcomes Lab here at the Blavatsky School of Government. And it's my absolute privilege to welcome you to the Indigo Hack and Learn Spring 2024. As you might have heard, this is a recorded session. The Hack and Learn is an asynchronous event. So this kickoff session will be posted online for and made available to everybody who couldn't join us uh, at this very moment. Please forward to colleagues and friends who are planning to join the Hack and Learn. It will be available also online. As uh, some of you know, the Hack and Learn is part of our Indigo initiative hosted at the Government Outcomes Lab. Indigo is a data and learning community. Our key motivation is to draw the community together. And so the Hack and Learn is uh, an example of how we work with uh, the broader community out there. We do data, we do lots of learning, and uh, we try to improve how data can be shared and how can we learn from the data to understand how we can achieve better outcomes and how we can address complex social problems. This spring edition is being co-hosted by two of our partners who are the INSPER matrices in Sao Paulo. Gabriel is uh, on the call. If uh, Can you say hi with your hands so people can see you? Gabriel from INSPER, welcome. And uh, the South African Medical Research Council from South Africa, of course, and we have Petro online. She might not be on video, but uh, thank you for joining us, Petro and Gabriel from uh, Brazil and from South Africa. Uh, this is us, and I would like to invite you to tell us in the chat what is your name and when you, where you are joining us from uh, today. Before we kick off, I want to go over some basic housekeeping rule. Uh, try to keep yourself uh, on video. It would be nice to see you, but keep yourself muted unless uh, I'll give you the floor. There will be time to ask uh, questions at the end. And so when that time comes, uh, you will be allowed to unmute and uh, pose your question live. Keep putting questions or messages in the chat as we go along. So in the, in the next slide, can I go on the agenda for today? This is what's happening in this uh, probably just a little bit over half an hour. This is the Indigo Bunting, which is our mascot. Uh, I didn't edit it. This is a real bird. And is it also a symbol of our tweeting and sharing in social meeting in social media about our event? So feel free to disseminate and uh, let others know about the work that we are doing. Today we will start with an introduction to the hack and learn. For some of you, this is the first time others uh, are uh, returning customers. We will be sharing some tips on how you can make the most of the hack and learn. Today is an opportunity for uh, the leader of the challenge to pitch to you and persuade you how you can best contribute and why this will be a very good use of your time during the uh, next two weeks. We don't expect you to be on the Hack and Learn uh, constantly, of course, but uh, our uh, champion will uh, point out why it's worthwhile to dedicate a little bit of time every day to make your uh, contribution to this challenge. You will have a chance to ask questions at the end of the session. And uh, we will also give a brief introduction on how you join the challenge and what is the technical support that is available and how we can keep engage, engage with each other during these two weeks. So before I go, uh, on, I will pause to see if there are any immediate questions on uh, what I said so far. Okay, so let me move on and I'm gonna pass the floor to my wonderful colleague, Shri, here that will introduce the Hack and Learn for those who haven't taken part uh, in it before and sharing some tip on how to participate in making the most of this opportunity. Re, over to you. 
Thank you, Mara. Um, first of all, I really want to extend like a warm welcome to everyone who's here. Uh, we're really excited to have all of you join us uh, and be part of Hack and Learn. Um, as mentioned in like the slide, like um, Mara mentioned as well, this is the kickoff session, and we have the two weeks to hack and hack and hack, and then we end the kind of the two weeks with a show and tell session where we kind of show and tell what we have learned and what we kind of like um, done in the two weeks. So in the next slide, um, we have a few tips on how to make the most out of Hack and Learn and really learn and be involved in the challenges. Uh, so the first tip is you'll have a challenge leader will be pitching the challenge leader. So they will be the main point of help. So if you have any question, you can feel free to ask them and they are there to help you and kind of guide you in this hacking and learning journey. Uh, and the second tip is during the show and tell, which will be happening in 21st March uh, in two weeks time. So we'll have around 20, 15 minutes to really share your results. So we do not expect kind of really final something. So it could be something like what you've learned, what is the prototype or something uh, part of like the ideas that you came up with during the two weeks. Uh, so we really kind of want to emphasize on the learning part because we have hack and we have to learn. So learning is really essential to this hack and learn um, event. So we really hope you do learn a um, few things from this event. Uh, so the final tip is that while you're working on the challenge, we encourage you to write down your thoughts and what you're learning from the experience. Because at the end of the hack and learn, we'll be producing a technical and learning report, which we'll publish on GoLab's website. So that's really a place for you to kind of reflect and you can co-author that report with, with us. So it will be really good for you to take some notes during the process and so that you'll have something that you can contribute and write about. Uh, that's really it from my side. And I don't want to take any more time because I'm kind of standing in between the exciting challenge pitch that's coming up. So I'll pass the floor back tomorrow. Thank you, Shri. I want to emphasize the hack and the learn part. The first time when we uh, thought about the idea of uh, launching a hack and learn, I was worried because I'm not a coder and I thought, how can I contribute? So it doesn't matter. You need to have ideas and uh, propose. Wouldn't it be nice if we could connect this data with this data? This is all we are asking you that you think and find solution because we are lucky enough to have support from open data services that will give us the coding ability and some advice on how we create data visualization and smart ways to use technology. So before we go to the challenges, I would like to pass the microphone to Nlima, who is part of open data services and will support us through this Hack and Learn as they did in a previous I can learn. Nilima, can you unmute yourself and uh, say a few words? Uh, apologies from Nilima's side. She's not joined with us. Um, so maybe we could come back to her slightly at a later time. And yeah, back to you, Mara. Okay, sorry. I couldn't keep track of everything. Nelima from Open Data Services will be joining us on the Slack channel and she will be part of uh, the chat. She will regularly monitor the chat. And uh, when we post questions to her on the back end, she will help us with coding, producing infographics and make proposition to us as a community on how we can use the data and put it together in a useful uh, way. So with... Uh, Without further ado, I am now launch, launching us in our challenge. The challenge leader have been given 15 minutes to give you the highlights and the overview of the challenge and what they aim for us to achieve by the end of this period. This is hacking team number 33 because in the past hack and learn we had a number of challenges and so this is the 33rd of our challenges. Uh, the challenge is called, as you can see here, that extraction using artificial intelligence. And Huli, Mateus, and Madhu are uh, telling us about the challenge. Over to you. Thank you, Mara. Can you hear me well? Great. So if we could go to the next slide, what I'm going to do is to tell you a bit more about the process that we are trying to automate here. 
before uh, leaving the floor to Madhu and Mateus, they are going to be the ones describing the challenge in depth. But what I want to tell you a bit about is what is the process that we are trying to automate or to make it easier or to streamline. I am referring to the process of extracting data and uploading new data to the Impact Bond data set. As you may know, or probably you don't know, and we can share some links in the chat later, we host an Impact Bond data set where we collect data on social impact bonds from all around the world. But the process of collecting data for this impact bond data set could really, it looks different depending on, uh, there are different ways to share data with us. Sometimes we have organizations who are voluntarily sharing data with us, and that's easier. But sometimes the data stewards or the data analysts are just reading, reading and reading reports, evaluation reports, press releases, and other type of documents where we look for data and whenever we find data, we extract the data and upload it to the database. If we go to the next slide, I will show you an example of that. Here we have the cover page of a very famous evaluation of an impact bond project. This is the evaluation of the multi-systemic therapy service in Essex. This is a very old impact bond uh, here in the UK. It was all about children's services and family services. What I would do if I were to collect data for the impact bond data set is to start reading this evaluation report. And then if I click one more time, I will see that in one of the pages of, the, of this evaluation report, I will find that the start date of this project was April 2013. What I would do immediately after is upload this data to our impact bond data set. And if we click one more time, I will show you how this project appears in our database. You just need to click on the project and you will see that the start date of service provision is April 2013. And this is basically what I did. I just read the report, extracted some data and uploaded it to the database. And some minutes later, you can see the entire database on the GoLab website. So this is just to explain you what I'm trying to automate here, or maybe what Madhu and Mateus are going to try to automate here. This is something that happens in a very manual way. And as you can imagine, it takes us time and effort, and we are always reading reports. But sometimes there are so many impact bonds that we don't have time to read every single report, every single document, every single press release. So this is basically what we're trying to work with. This is our baseline. This is what is already happening, and we're trying to, to streamline in the future, or at least let's just test if there is a possibility of streamlining this. I will leave the floor to Madhu and Matheus, but if you have any questions on how we work with the impact bond they just said, please drop, in, drop them in the chat and I will be happy to address them. Thanks, Juli. Thank you very much for everyone that joined us. I'm Matheus, joining from Brazil. Very happy to see all of you guys joining us for this exciting challenge. And we are going to divide the challenge in three parts. Uh, the first part focus on, uh, it's our data harvest fest, and it focuses on uh, data extraction. But before diving in this uh, sub challenge, let me say a few general words about what we're trying to do here. Um, if you guys weren't on the moon in the last uh, year or so, we you knew about, you, you heard about the, the advancing the AI technologies, especially large language models such as ChatGPT, Gemini, Bard, and all those uh, tools that are available now for us to um, use text to produce text and even other forms of data like images or videos and uh, that they generated a lot of uh, fuss and that they have an enormous power for to improve our learning and and productivity and and to take us to places we we haven't been so far, uh, but every time a technology is invented, we have an adoption process, right? Because uh, when someone invents a typewriter, for example, no one knows how to type, and we have to take some time to learn how to use it and to adopt it into our process. So our challenge here is a is an intent of uh, bringing these technologies to our work in GoLab and to our collaborative work with the, with the data on the social impact bonds and beyond to see how we can improve those processes using those tools. So the first one, our data harvest fast, is related to the data extraction that Huli just mentioned. And what we are gonna do is to try and see what we can do using those tools, especially ChatGPT, but not only, 
to uh, extract data from materials that you have, for example, those policy reports, and to populate that data in the database. So in the first part, we are going to try to extract essential variables like project names, countries, and key dates from project reports. We are going to focus on using ChatGPT to interpret and summarize content effectively, uh, which is we are going to see if we can use it to improve this process that Huli just described and make it faster or maybe even automatic from using reports and getting those variables from it. In a second step, in the same sub-challenge, we are going to advance this and try to do deeper textual analysis of the project descriptions and notes. So we are going to use ChatGPT to dissect text, extract themes, sentiments, and categorizations, and reaching the database. So in the first step, we're just going to get the variables as they are. And in the second one, we are going to see if we can have some deeper analysis on top of it. Uh, to the second uh, sub-challenge, I pass it to Madhu. Madhu, over to you, if you can change the slide. Thank you. Thank you, Matthias. So like we've all seen, the first part of the challenge was all about extraction, but that's not it. That's not where AI stops helping us, but it's only the beginning. So what we are trying to do next is we are trying to understand if it is the data that AI extracts, chat GPT extracts for us, is authentic enough, is accurate enough, and if it can identify completeness or incompleteness in the data that we already have. So we are trying to feed in some resources that we have into chat GPT, see if it can identify loose ends and see if it can fill those loose ends. So it's, if you think about it, it's like, a mirror image of what we've done in the first exercise. In the first exercise, we just focused on finding or extracting data. But in the second exercise, we're trying to authenticate if the data that's extracted is correct, complete, and accurate. And then view the, weave these two things together and see if that can make our lives easy. Simple. That's what we are trying to do. The thing is that when you looked at the first slide, you saw one date. But that's not it. The Indigo data set has loads and loads of information on each project. Sometimes extracting one small paragraph could mean we are reading 10 to 15 pages to get the perfect gist. Do you think ChatGPT can do that without human intervention? Let's check. For the third part of this challenge, I'm again going to pass the page to Matthias and he'll, going to, he'll take us from there. Thanks again, Madhu. Uh, so the third one, the auto flow fiesta. The, I think that's the chunkier part. That's the that's the cherry on top of our cake. Um, we we separated this one as a, like an extra challenge to see if we can go beyond those first two ones. Because what we we did in the in the first one and the second one is basically trying to improve what we are doing uh, with our colleagues and, and data stewards in populating the data and checking its accuracy in a better way using those tools. In the last one, what we are trying to do is automate these processes. So we are first trying to automate the analysis and visualization of uh, time and geographical variables and trends using programming on top of ChatGPT. So we are using ChatGPT to help us building this programming that would automate the, those tasks. And then as a second part of this cherry, we have the advanced automated integration workflow. So just as something for us to imagine and try and see how close we can get to it, we are trying to develop an automated workflow for data scrapping, validation, and integration that would automatically get the data from those reports and populate the data for us. So uh, this is like the challenge of the challenges. We are not like expecting to, to do this over two weeks because it's a really hard challenge and it demands a lot of skills, but we, we wanted to see what we can get in terms of ideas and insights on this, because I think it could be helpful for further work as we develop these uh, learnings that we got from the first two ones so we can integrate them in the workflows and maybe in some time we can have an automated scraping of the data and populating the Indigo database. So continuing our relay race, Madhu, back to you. 
Well, I think the fact that we've seen that it's a lot of heavy lifting and working around and getting data, putting it in chat GPT, getting some insights, trying to read, that's not A. What we are trying to do is as a collective community, see if this works. The data already is rich and we've put years and years of effort in getting it where it is. We do not want to lose the essence just because we are getting lazy and want AI to do it, but we want to test if this actually works. So the bigger deal is, is this the way to go further? That's what we are trying to achieve from all our smaller exercises. But we're not leaving you high and dry. You've already seen that the challenges are made in a staggered order. So there's definitely something for everybody. Also, if you're wondering, oh, I do not have a chat GPT paid account and I do not know what to do. Well, it's all right because we're going to work in ways where we can use free accounts to go through all the challenges as efficiently as possible. Although all the collabers who are here on the channel have their paid account. So we are happy to collaborate, work together and see how that goes further. But here are a few links and materials for us to participate. Remember the reports that we read? One of those is linked here. So that's a good example to test what we've been doing so far. Amazing. So I'm gonna pass it back to Matthias. Thanks, Madhu. So uh, as Madhu said, we we want to use uh, AI to improve our work and not to substitute our work because we know that the human side of it is fundamental and we cannot lose sight of it. So some additional considerations that we must have in mind for this is, first of all, the ethical use of AI. We know that uh, AI presents some issues on accuracy, biases, uh, and integrity, and we have to keep track of keep track of those and be aware that not all the information that it spits out is correct and we have to double check and guarantee that we are using it the best way. Uh, also, uh, as Madhu said also, we have uh, our human side, We are, our best thing I think in our the networks that we built are, is the collaboration and we have to keep using it and not lose the rich collaboration that we developed with the data stewards, analysts, and officers. And we would like to integrate the tools on it and not substitute it. And the last two ones, the sustainability and escalation, are for us to keep track of this future, this possible future use of it, and these uh, further steps after the, the hack and learn event. So if we can think of the challenges as uh, stepping stones that we are going to use to get to a, a higher level of use of those tools, but not just an exercise for this moment and that's it. So we are going to do the challenges having in mind that these are going to be bricks for a bigger building that we are going to build in the future. Um, so back to Huli and Sri. Just a quick note. So we welcome you and really, really encourage you to participate in this challenge with us. We, are, we can't wait to work together with you. Welcome to Hug and Learn Challenge 33. Thank you, everybody. I wonder, can we go back to the title of the challenge before we go to practicalities? Uh, just in case people have question. I have a question by Love. Lavania, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, apologies if I don't. Do you want to ask the question? Can you unmute? Hi, sure, thanks. And yes, you pronounced my name perfectly. Welcome. Um, so I've never used ChatGPT to work with data. I've only done it for like summaries of text and like for querying about issues. Um, so is there a place where we can kind of like start learning how to use chat GPT to even like begin this process of data, of working with data? Or will there be like a one-on-one -on -one for dummies um, session given to us? Hi, Lavanya. Um, yes, uh, we, I think we can, when we get into the Slack groups, we're gonna have like subgroups for each of the, each of the uh, sub challenges. But yours is a very good question. Uh, we will prepare some like basic one-on-one -on, -one on how to use ChatGPT uh, to work with data. And we are also open to have 
this uh, ongoing discussion in the Slack and over the next few uh, couple of weeks. So we can do like an iterative process of like trying and seeing and then asking questions and then going back to chat GPT. So uh, I'm going to find some something that's going to be like an introduction. Don't worry about that. But uh, even after we can keep the discussion going and, and checking uh, what are the doubts on, on the use of ChatGPT to work with data and then going back to to the 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 tool. Madhu, you wanna okay, that's, add that's anything helpful. on this? Welcome to the challenge, Navanya. And I think this is the best opportunity for you to dig into this and get your hands dirty because there's no better way of learning a new thing but trying so here's your chance to try chat gpt okay thank you thank you thank you is there any other question okay i'll uh, move us i oh, know petra please hello Hi everyone, nice to see some familiar faces um, logging in from Brighton. Um, so I had a question um, about GPT-4. I wondered if you tried training a chatbot, which is basically available as part of the GPT-4 function. So it has sort of like a functionality which um, me and um, a lady who are, were founding a social enterprise at the moment, we're sort of like looking at ways how we can upload information and train a particular GPT um, to extract information from documents. I'm not sure if you try out with this at all. Petra, I think you started the challenge already. Yeah. I think that's a very good <laughs> idea on how to, to move uh, on the first step. Uh, we are trying to use also ChatGPT 3.5. As we know, not all of the participants have ChatGPT 4, but you're, of course, more than welcome to, to try this and to share with the colleagues because I think it's a wonderful idea and it's a way we can, uh, it's a very good way we can start extracting the data and checking its accuracy. Yeah. So I, I think that you, you can repeat all that you said on the chat because that's yeah. a very good start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm not sure whether this would be accurate. This is something which um, I'm looking into as well, but there are, there are ways to like integrate it and also to create a separate um, sort of like platform, let's say, um, linking it with, um, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Zapier. Um, it basically links different, um, well, let's say applications or like softwares. Um, so there would be a way of like creating basically an own bot from which you're asking questions related to the data, um, related to documents. I'm guessing this is only for data, which is publicly, well, not publicly available, but, but sort of like sensitive data I, I wouldn't think that sensitive data should be trialed on it um but yeah it's basically somewhat a closer system because it's not ex extracting information from everywhere but more like from yeah a, a, let's say a private data set which is um the bot getting trained with um but yeah we'll repeat myself in the yeah chat and um, nice to meet everyone thank you nice to meet you Wonderful. I already can't wait to hear the show and tell session at the end of our Hack Learn and see what uh, Petra produced uh, with the chatbot. Uh, any other questions? Okay, then uh, I will pass the microphone to Ozzy, who will uh, guide us through some practicalities on how do we join this lab channel and uh, wh what you will find there and uh, how we can start interacting, Ozzy. Thank you. So uh, how to find the Slack channels? Um, first, you need to have um, um, Slack downloaded or you can access it via web using the link that will be in the chat. Um, uh, once you've done um, this on the Slack channel, you just sign in and search for the Hack and Learn team. So if we go to the next slides, different teams have different numbers. Um, but before then, if you're signing up for the first time, you get a verification code sent to your email and then you'll be um, welcome to the GoLab um, channel. Once you've done that, then if we go to the next one, um, you, you're welcomed in. 
Um, if you go to the next one, please. Um, here. So here on the right, on the left hand side, you'd see the different channels and then you'll be able to select the channel or the um, hack and lem team that you want to join. Typically, I just join every channel or every link because sometimes I don't know which one yet. Um, and then introduce yourself on the chat and then the conversations and the questions can begin. Um, so Shri has just dropped the link in the chat. Thank you, Shri. So if you click on this, oh. Yeah, we're uh, checking why it's not active. Uh, bear with us. <laughs> yeah, just give us a minute. Okay, there is a new link in the chat. Apologies for the hiccup. Thanks, Sri. Um, yes, now I can sign in with this one. Um, yeah, so that's largely how um, I wanted to see if the next slide would have the... Yes, so this hash, hash um, hack team 33 um, is how you then um, would um, identify the channels that you want to join um yeah so i will be trying mine now so if if you have any questions you can just pop it in the chat and then we'll be able to yeah uh, and then if you have questions as well with your data or um any technical questions or any questions with maybe the tools that you're using you can join this uh, uh technical help channel and if you want to just chat with other people in other teams you can join the networking lounge um channel um, yeah, so I will be hanging around and hand over to Mara in case anyone has any questions. Yeah, any question on uh, signing in? Lavanya, and uh, I know that uh, you've been trying. Can you let us know if you managed to get on the Yep, channel? yep. I'm in now, perfectly. On the Slack channel, it works. Anybody else who is trying and uh, there is time to revisit or contact us so you don't have to be on it right now to participate. I already, I, I, I already saw some people coming to our Slack channel tomorrow, so I think it's working this time. Wonderful. So um, these, uh, the video with the instructions and video is all posted. And uh, if you are maybe on your phone or you can contribute right now, the link will also be emailed to you. So I would like to take the opportunity to ask you to share your uh, impression, question and expectation for the Hack and Learn uh, in the time that we have left. And uh, what you will uh, see here is a QR code because we would uh, also welcome your uh, suggestions on uh, Indigo, and uh, which is the data set that we will be working with over these uh, two weeks. And in particular, we would uh, love to hear your suggestion on how it could be improved or if you see there are things that are missing or unclear and need to be um, worked on. This survey, I just warn you, it will not take more than 10 minutes. I don't promise this survey is only taking two minutes. It's not true. It's going to take about 10 minutes to complete, but no more. And it will help us to prioritize further development on uh, this data initiative. So if you are uh, an Indigo user, you know it very well. And uh, if you are not yet, uh, you will bring a fresh perspective and it will be very, very much welcome. So in the few minutes that we have left, uh, I'm uh, I'm encouraging you to share any comments or expectations uh, about the Hack and Learn. If you do have any, or maybe you are already on the challenge. I think we can move on to Slack, Mara, because I've seen lots of people start joining our channel. So I think we are all starting our conversation. Perfect. Here. So I, um, the only thing that is left for me to do is to thank you for participating uh, to this session today and ask uh, your live questions for those of you who were able to participate live. 
as I said, the session will be posted and so it can be shared with others. And the link to join the Slack challenge will be emailed to you. That's another link that you can share. And uh, I am giving a goodbye and see you in a minute on, uh, on Slack. And then we will see all of you again at the show and tell on the 21st of March. Thank you. Thank you so Have much. Rest of Thank the day. You.